What is up, South Point kids? Hope you're doing well. Love you, miss you, can't wait to see you again. It's right around the corner, we're almost there. Uh, so I hope you're doing all right. And we are going to start today in Matthew chapter 8 and read verses 1 through 17 together. So to recap real quick, that means we have just finished the Sermon on the Mount which was chapters Matthew, Matthew chapters 5 through 7. So it's taken us a little over two months to get through the greatest sermon ever. Hope you learned some things. Hope you learned um, how to apply like prayer to your life when Jesus was teaching that or about judging others or to ask, seek, and knock. I just hope you were able to take something from his sermon, from the Sermon on the Mount, and apply it to your life. So if you will, let's go ahead and read together. Matthew 8, verses 1 through 17. So when he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for proof to them. Verse 5, When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And when I say to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Verse 14, And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever, he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. So we just read a lot of verses. And what what can we what's the big highlight? What should we learn from this pass these passages? And really, the biggest thing is to have, having faith leads to healing. So having faith leads to healing. So let's break that down and explain that a little bit more. So the leper in verses 1 through 4. So he had leprosy and it was like a skin disease and people tried to avoid them and like shun them and didn't want to be around them. And the, the leper is like, Jesus, if you touch me, I will be healed. Um, because he believed, he had faith in who Jesus was. And because of that, that led to his healing. The centurion, he was an official in the, he was a Roman officer. And he, had, he was in charge of 100 men. And he basically, he's like, Jesus, my servant is not doing well. Can you heal him? And Jesus was like, yeah, I'll come do it. And the centurion was like, no, Jesus, if you just say it, it'll happen. Because he had faith that Jesus could heal his servant. And then verses 14 through 17. So Peter's mother-in-law and others were healed because they had faith. And having faith led to the healing, which is our big highlight. So how can we, we broke it down, how having faith leads to healing, and we went through these examples. So how can we apply that to our lives today? What can we do? So first, we just need to have faith in Jesus Christ. And faith is complete trust or confidence. So if we are completely trusting and having confidence in Jesus and who He is and what He's done for us, just like the leper did, just like 
the centurion did, just like Peter's mother-in-law did. We need to have complete faith and trust in Him. No matter what, no matter if we're going through the good times or the bad times, never losing faith or focus for our future in Him. Y'all see what I did there? Faith, focus, future, that's still our theme for 2020. So have faith in Jesus. Trust in Him and in Him alone. And that's what we can do and learn from these examples in Matthew chapter 8. So to respond, like yes, we're going to respond by prayer and asking God to deepen your faith in Him. But we're going to take that another step farther and go do something that deepens your faith in Him. So if that means you need to start reading your Bible more, or if you need to start praying more than just one time a day and at meals, having conversations with people, like do something that deepens your faith in Him. Maybe that means painting different verses um, on, a, on a board and that helps you memorize them. So do something. So let's pray and ask God to deepen our faith and then let's, let's have an action step and go do that. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the book of Matthew and that we can we can turn to it and learn more about you and how having faith led to healing for these examples of the leper and the centurion and then Peter's mother-in-law and others, Lord. So help us deepen our faith and walk with you, Lord, uh, today and this week so that we have just complete trust and confidence in who you are uh, for the rest of our lives. So we love you and we praise your name. Amen. All right, South Point kids. We'll see you later. Love y'all.